So in this segment from our Friday discussions, Friday, March 27th, 2020, we have three topics that cover using the Power Options search tool and strategy concepts as well. Our first conversation comes from Jerry. And Jerry says, I've been looking at some of the higher rated stocks on the IBD50 to purchase. They look like they're in a good position, maybe currently at a low, but could be a good stock to hold and wait for some kind of rebound if and when the market starts to recover. I was hoping to get some input on the idea of doing covered calls on these stocks. And if I do, what are your thoughts on in the money, at the money, or out of the money? Would it be better to look for more downside protection at this time? Just some thoughts on this if you could. Fantastic. No problem. So, in a sense, some of the answers to Jerry's questions were answered in his question. In the first comment, he says, they look like they are good stocks at a low, but could be a good stock to hold and wait for some kind of a rebound. But if you're looking to do covered calls now and hold the stocks longer term, this implies an out-of-the-money covered call, selling calls that are above the current stock price. But then Jerry also comments, would it be better to look for more downside protection at this time? Well, that implies an in-the-money covered call, selling calls that are below the current stock price. So which is most important? Let's just take a look at a quick option chain. We'll take a look at Apple. This is uh, from March 31st, of course, it's, uh, not the 27th. But Apple is trading around 262. I marked it here on a green line, so everything below that price would be considered in the money, with the 260 really being at the money. And everything above that is going to be considered out of the money. Now let's take a look at that deep in the money 235 strike. It's roughly 27 points in the money, currently has a bid of 35.70 and an ask of 36.70. Well, this implies we might get a midpoint of around 36.20. That would give us a downside protection of 13.8%. That's simply the option premium divided by the current stock price. It shows us how far the stock could fall before we're technically losing money on the position. At the same time, if the stock stays above 235 and we're assigned and deliver our shares of stock, we still make a 4% return for the next 45 days. Now, in the center, we have the probability column selected. This shows us that the 235 strike has about a 71% theoretical probability that the stock will be trading above 235 and will be assigned at expiration. Well, Jerry's comment was that he might want to consider holding these positions longer term, looking for more of a rebound. If that's the case, the stock stays the same, he's going to be forced to buy back this call, cancel his obligation to deliver stock, and roll it to a June or July series. If the stock moves up further, he might pay more than he originally collected. Looking at the higher strikes, we go to the 280 strike, we see a bid of 9.95 and ask of 10.10. So we can assume a midpoint around $10 or so. And what does this give us? Well, this gives us a 3.8% downside protection. Meaning if the stock falls more than 3.8% between now and May and expiration, we'll be losing money on the position. Of course, the call would expire and then we could sell another call, but it gives us a gauge. This is almost directly opposite of the numbers of that deep in the money 235. Here we see if the stock is assigned at 280, meaning Apple moves up above 280 at May expiration, we would be assigned, or we'd potentially have to buy to close the call to cancel the obligation. But if we're assigned, it's an 11% return with a 3.8 downside protection. This is almost the reverse numbers of the in the money call with a 13.8 downside protection and a 4% return if assigned. Before we go further into that discussion, let's go ahead and set up a quick search for covered calls based on Jerry's needs. Now to start our search, we'll just go to the main covered call screen. We can see here the basic description, a basic profit and loss chart, links to our educational course on the covered call strategy, and we have links to look at the tested picks of the day and weekly picks of the day that Ernie put together, and we can 
access the chain, the search, and more. Let's go directly to the search. And anytime you click on the search tool, it's going to show you potential covered call positions that match our default criteria. As I scroll down below the list of trades here, we see we're looking at the current default at the money screen. We could also use the defaults for in the money, out of the money, and more. But to keep things simple, we're going to start off with Jerry's needs and assuming that based on the idea he wants to hold these positions longer term, we're going to go with the out of the money positions, but still with a reasonable downside protection. First step is to hit the button that says clear filters below the list of trades. This will empty out all of the default criteria in the parameter field below. I can always go back to the at the money, in the money, or out of the money defaults. I didn't erase those, but we're going to create our own search. To start, let's stay with the standard May expiration 45 days out. If you wanted to look for shorter term, we could just select April, or we could also go with all expirations and say we want to go 0 to 15 days, 0 to 10 days, 2 to 10 days if you wanted to do weeklies. But let's just stick with that standard May expiration. Now, we can do a lot of filtering for time value, implied volatility, implied volatility range. We'll get to that in just a moment. First, I want to focus on the downside protection. Although I'm selling out of the money, and I know it's going to have a lower downside protection, I still want a reasonable downside protection, say maybe at least 4% or 5%. Now, I'm not going to worry about the percent if assigned at this time. My focus is more being out of the money, still generating a good premium, not worried about being assigned because we want to perhaps hold this for longer term for a market recovery. Now down below we talked about the simplicity of just saying I want to be out of the money. Well we have the in the money and out of the money fields. I find it usually best to use the percent out of the money. We'll just start off with at least 4% out of the money or more, greater than 4%. And we talked about the probabilities. Yes, I know I'm already forcing it to be out of the money, and I want a reasonable downside protection. But at the same time, I might want to look for something that has less than, a, say, a 40% probability of being assigned at expiration. It just helps me also set the position to be out of the money. We could put in technicals, which I normally might do for a bullish strategy. Look for something that's trading above its 20-day or 50-day moving average, but current market conditions preclude that might also use look, a filter to look for a positive MACD, but again, we're not in those current market conditions. So let's go to fundamentals at this time. And I don't know Jerry's account size. I don't need to. I know mine, of course. And anytime I'm looking at a covered call, a collar, a married put or cash secured naked put position, I'm probably limiting my stock range to be, say, between 10 and $150 just due to the underlying cost. Well, you can put in whatever you need as well. And Jerry's last comment, or main comment was, he's looking at stocks in the IBD 50 that he thinks are strong. So simply, we'll just go to the lists field, and we have a sector and industry filter, and a stock list filter. We'll just click the drop-down menu and include, and I'm going to go ahead and select IBD 50. And there's other lists you can choose from as well, and you can create your own personal stock list. Well, just with those four or five filters, let's see what we've got in our results. We'll go ahead and click Submit Search. All right, so we have about 52 out-of-the-money covered call opportunities, all with the reasonable downside protection and, of course, the probability that we wanted. But we see some duplicates in here, a couple DQs, a couple solar winds. Let's clean that up simply by doing two things. First, we're going to go ahead and change that to just one result per security. And although I'm comfortable with the results that came up, maybe I want a minimum option premium of, say, at least 50 cents or 60 cents or so to take in. Well, let's go ahead and add that into the option bid price and resubmit the search. Fantastic. Now we've got 26 results. Nice lowered list. We can see the different covered call opportunities, our return and downside protection, as well as 
the probability that the stock would be below our strike prices at expiration. And as always, of course, now you can use that Edit More Information button to evaluate the profit and loss chart, further research company news, information and profile, do detailed research in the stock or the option, or of course, go to the option chain directly as we saw with Apple to compare other strikes on the positions. Okay, so going further, which is the right structure? Well, again, it depends on your goals. Because Jerry mentioned he wanted to hold longer term, to me this implies an out-of-the-money covered call that hopefully does not need to be rolled. But he's also concerned about protection, which implies an in-the-money covered call, but we did just set up a basic screen for out-of-the-money covered calls that match Jerry's needs with at least some reasonable downside protection. Now, during the webinar, we had a couple of comments on this discussion. Sam offered to don't do covered calls, do collars in volatile markets, where he might be selling an out-of-the-money call, buying an out-of-the-money put for protection. Sam says, I am in collars within the money puts and holding bullish contra ETFs. Bob also offered that a married put structure is better in this type of market. And I tend to agree. A better way for premium and protection would be to consider a standard collar. So on Apple, we might buy shares of stock at that price, 260, 262, and we'll buy an out of the money put, maybe that 235 strike instead of selling the in the money call, and at the same time sell a 270 or 275 call to generate some premium. We still have a positive net premium, about $4 here in this situation. We limit the downside to a risk of only 8.5%, even if there's a large decline, especially in the pre or after market hours where stop loss wouldn't help you. And we still have a reasonable upside return of about 5% with some premium taken in to lower the cost basis on the position. Now, if I am planning on a market recovery, I'm not saying we have hit the market bottom, but if you feel we're close to the bottom, you're looking to nibble at stocks, I think a better approach is to use the radioactive married put position, where we buy shares of stock, buy a far out in time in the money put, as Sam mentioned. We have a controlled risk of only 6 or 7%, even with implied volatility pretty high right now, but that's for 190 to 200 days out in time. We leave the upside open for the rebound with protection in place guaranteed, better than a stop order. And of course, if the stock starts to recover, we could always look to sell out of the money calls or do other adjustments as well. That's what's discussed in the blueprint. So if you think you want to nibble now on stocks, looking for an increase and you're considering covered calls, you're probably looking at out of the money, but remember, use that downside protection filter to help you stay out of the money but still get a good premium in. But to me, on Jerry's other thoughts about what are your comments on this approach, I'd rather see protection in place using a standard collar if you're looking for income, but if you're expecting more of a rebound, consider the radioactive married put structure. On that note, it leads us to our second topic on using the search tool, of course, and also strategy discussion as well. Naren says, how do I scan for stocks with high volatility to sell cash secured puts and naked put positions? Well, first, let's clarify the terms. The cash secured or naked put position is where we sell an out of the money put option below the current stock price, hoping it will expire worthless. Or if the stock does fall, we'll be able to get in the stock at a discount. Here we see an example of selling a May 230 put that's not protected by another put or in a calendar spread, just a straight naked put. Now we'll collect about 890, 885 for the premium. Now we'd have to put up the $23,000 to be cash secured. That's the obligation. We may end up buying shares of stock at $230 if the stock falls below it. We do keep a premium. If the stock stays above 230, that put expires worthless. We keep the $890 or so off of a requirement of 23,000, gives us about a 4% percent 
naked yield or return. It's a very similar profit and loss chart to an in the money covered call, isn't it? For volatility, Nareen did say highly volatile stocks. We also want to make sure we're clear on the comments here. Stock or option volatility. The volatility of the stock is called the historical volatility. And on power options, you can screen for that and you can filter for that. And we typically use the 50 day volatility of the stock. Change in price over the last 50 days. Volatility of the option is called the implied volatility. It's more of a forward looking measure of where the market maybe expects the option prices to be in a sense. Sometimes it's also called the gauge of fear on the market. As you can imagine, both stock volatility, historical volatility, and options implied volatility are extremely high during these times. But what is a high volatility and how to search for it? First things first, before I go into the naked put search, I'm going to navigate here over to the learning center underneath the main home tab. This gives me some useful education and information, strategies, tutorials, archive webinars, and more. What I want to click on is this market activity field. This gives me access to earnings coming up this week, ex-dividend dates, 52-week highs and lows, market statistics, and optionable stock statistics. This is a listing of the high and low and average values across the entire market of certain optionable criteria and stock criteria as well. When we go to this page, we see a full list of the averages across the market. The average stock price of all optionable stocks, ETFs and indexes is $39.81. We have things here for the average and the high and low price to earnings, price to book, price to sales, earnings per share growth and more. But we're going to scroll down a little bit more. And here we see our volatilities. The average implied volatility right now across all options is 1.45, which you might say 145%. That's almost five times what the average was probably three months ago before volatility really kicked in. The average 50-day stock volatility is at 0.99, 99% you might say. This again is about four times what the average was a few months ago. So why is this important? Well, Darin asked to look for naked puts where the volatility is really high. Going to this page first gives me a gauge of what is considered the average volatility of the stocks and the average implied volatility of the options. So I'm going to use that as my starting point when considering what is high volatility. Now that we have that number in our heads, let's go ahead and go to the naked put search just as we did for the covered call. As before, this will come up with one of our defaults, the weekly picks of the day. And rather than change the criteria, we'll do the same thing we did for Jerry. For Narin, we'll clear the filters. And we're going to look for maybe a standard expiration. Let's just keep April shorter term. And what do we want with that naked put? Well, we know we're going to want a good yield. Instead of a downside protection, the term we use here is the percent to break even. How far the stock can fall before we start losing money on the position. Let's keep that the same as our downside protection. We'll use a percent to break even of 4% or more. I still want to going to be out of the money as well. So we'll keep that the same, about a 3% or 4% out of the money range, even though we're using shorter term. And of course, the probability. Now, instead of a lower probability, I want a higher probability above. Higher probability the stock's going to stay above my short put strike price and will expire worthless. Let's start with just 65% or more. Now, to the volatility. I can enter filters for the implied volatility, the percent implied volatility range, IV over HV and IV over SIV, which are measures of overvalued options. We're going to start with our default of greater than 1.45. That was the average that we just saw on that market statistics page and the optionable stocks page. So we're going to use that as our default. 
We'll go into the next field for technicals. And what was our average? 0.99. We want to look for higher volatility, so we'll go above the average, 1.0. You could just put 1 in there as well. Again, normally in a naked put search, I'm going to look for stocks trading above their 50-day or 20-day moving average with a positive MACD and maybe a few other criteria, but the market conditions right now are precluding that. It would filter out all of the results. I may, however, want to consider a good average stock volume. This filter is measured in thousands, so let me go ahead and just put in 750. To just see stocks that trade on average 750,000 shares per day or more. Now to the fundamentals, of course, you wanted to look for mid to large cap stocks. We could go ahead and put in a market cap. Why not? We we'll see here that a mid cap range is 2,000 to 15,000. This filter is measured in millions. I'll start with mid cap around 2,500 or more. Stock price again, cash secured put. I want to restrict that based on my account size. Let's put in 10 to 150. All right, now, Narin didn't mention anything about lists. We're going to leave that blank. That was Jerry's uh, concern. That was Jerry's view to look for IBD 50 stocks. We're not going to use a stock list. Let's go ahead and submit this search. But I do see some that although the midpoint is at a good price, we have some with a, not a lot of activity. So as we did before, let's take in some new criteria. Let's look for some naked put positions that have at least traded maybe 5 or 10 contracts today with an open interest of maybe 10 contracts or more. Also, let's add in that premium too. I want to make sure I'm getting a good premium, even though we're only going 17 days out. Let's put that at about 50 cents. One thing to consider in both that covered call screen where you don't have the protection to the downside, that's why we suggested the collars and the married puts, and with the naked puts, where although we're 5, 6, 10% out of the money, we may want to avoid stocks that have an earnings date between now and expiration. So we don't get that sudden surprise of a stock falling 20, 30, or 40% being in an extra loss position. Now that we've added those few filters for volume, activity, minimum bid price, and earnings, we'll go ahead and submit the position. Now we've got much lower results, but again, we have duplicates here. We see RCL, um, Royal Caribbean Cruises, of course, Wayfair is on this list, and some of the Ultra ETFs. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit first. I'm going to check that box for one result per security. Remember, we can always do further research and analysis and link to the option chain later on the stocks that are listed or the ETFs to see other strike prices that may match our needs. But this helps us clean up the filters a little bit. Now we're back to our list. We've got RCL, Occidental, Virgin Galactic, Spirit, uh, Aerosystems, excuse me, Zillow is down there, and Wynn Resorts. 21 total results, perfectly manageable list to now do those further research and analysis on the position. Take a look at the stock chart, company information, detailed stock or option research, and more. Of course, as we could have done in either, if I'm comfortable with the results and this is what I wanted to see, we'll just go ahead and click the Save button. We can put in a search name for the position. Uh, we can just call this Narin's High Volatility Screen. There we go. And we could put in some further information. We'll click Save This Search. And now anytime I come back into Power Options in the Naked Put Search, this default screen will be listed with the other defaults that are there and my other save searches as well. So I can toggle back and forth between the other defaults, my other save searches as well. Now during the live webinar uh, that we went through, uh, both CCL, Carnival Cruise Lines, and RCL came up on that search and Arin said, hey, that's excellent. I was actually considering CCL based on other research I was doing for volatility. Now, the steps to follow again when you're scanning for any type of high hey, I want to look for positions with the highest time value. I want to look for positions with the highest earnings per share growth. The easiest way to see that is follow the path. Under the Home tab, click on Learning Center. From that menu, click on Market Activity, and then click on Optionable Stock Statistics to see the averages across the market and use that as a basis for your criteria. Whether you want to look for something that, say, hey, has a high volatility or, hey, 
what is considered a high volatility now because I'm going to look for stocks that are in the lower volatile range for maybe a strategy such as an iron condor position. Of course, in these market conditions, that might not be the best approach. And of course, for further education on our thoughts on naked put positions, protecting naked put positions or other structures, and managing naked put positions, remember, you can always go to the webinars page, powerop.com slash webinars.asp, click on the options strategies and scroll down that list. You'll see the introduction to naked puts and managing your naked put positions as well. But as before, to consider, although power options can help you set up the screen in these strategies, similar thoughts on the naked put approach come to mind with Jerry's discussion as a covered call. You might want to look on maybe trading a bull put credit spread, still using that same out of the money sold put for the naked put, but this would reduce margin. And at the same time, you'd have a known risk that's guaranteed. Yes, you can still lose 100% in that bull put credit spread if it drops below both strike prices, but you have a known risk instead of an open risk that we have with the covered call structure or with just the cash secured naked put as well. And last but not least, Robert sends us a discussion here. I'm considering buying calls for stocks with a short interest, a high short interest and low RSI. I'm potentially looking for that short squeeze there. What are the thoughts on the strategy and the best tool to obtain stocks with the highest short interest? Well, just as we saw with our other search discussions, we can look at both and search for both on Power Options. So we'll head back over to Power Options. We'll go into the Long's Call screen and we'll click on Search. Now here again, we see the four or five positions that match the default Bollinger Band screen on Power Options. We're going to adjust this a little bit based on what Bob needs. Again, he has a specific requirement, as did Naren and as did Jerry. So we're going to clear the filters and start from scratch. Now, in considering a long call, I don't necessarily want to be short term because if the stock doesn't show the movement that I want during that time period, I may have an option with a full loss if it expires worthless. Let's go ahead and maybe look a little further out in time. We'll set it to all expirations. Well, let's include May, but we'll go up to at least 90 days out in time. So about one and a half to three months out in time. Now we don't have any other requirements from Bob related to out of the money, at the money, or in the money positions. So maybe we'll just focus slightly in the money. One or two strikes in the money to out of the money positions. Let's do a range. So we'll use the strikes in the money. We'll go maybe up to two strikes in the money and blank to two out of the money, sort of focusing on the at the money range. Now I'm going to want to see some liquidity here. We're going to look for 10 contracts of volume today, maybe an open interest of 50. Uh, for those of you that like to find high activity, you can always use that percent current option volume. But the main focus here is on the RSI and that short interest that he referred to. So let's go ahead and go into the technicals and here is the RSI field. Of course the relative strength index is a popular thing that's used across uh, stock selection and stock gurus. The idea that when the market's falling when you hit a relative strength index of maybe less than 30 or less than 20 the stock is most likely to rebound off of that bottom. If you have an RSI above 80 that usually means it's going to turn the stock's going to start to fall. So let's start off with just a basic RSI of less than 35. And we'll look in that range. There's been a couple days of recovery recently, but let's still try to start with a 35 or less RSI. Now the idea behind the short interest, looking for stocks that have a high short interest so that hopefully a short squeeze comes in to those short sellers and buying is amplified. And we don't have the direct short interest filter, Ernie prefers and thinks it's a better filter to use the percent, or I'm sorry, the number days of short interest. This estimates how many days at normal trading and share buying would need to occur to cover all the short shares for the underlying. A higher number of days of short interest is a higher chance for short squeeze conditions to occur. And we just talked about what the short squeeze is. 
So we want to look for a higher number, maybe greater than 5, maybe greater than 10. Let's just start in that range. Just those basic criteria, expiration time frame, some good liquidity, uh, in and out of the money, range uh, less than 2, reasonable RSI, number of days to short interest. Let's run our search. All right, and here we go. Good, reasonable list of 36 total results. Manageable list that we've gotten again. Once more, however, we do see some duplicates here for tailored brands, Colony Capital, and a couple of others. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We're going to go ahead and use the one result per security. And of course, we could put in a limit to the ask price to say, hey, I want something that's maybe 10 cents or more, not too far out of the money, but I don't want to pay more than maybe $4 per contract. Just another way to filter it down further. Let's go ahead and submit that. And in case, now we're down to 26 results here. Nice, manageable list of long calls with that lower RSI and that higher days to short interest as well. And as before, if I'm comfortable with the list, we can go ahead and click on Save, name our search as we did before, and then go ahead and click Save this search. <clears throat> our search criteria will always be available for us when we come back into the long call search on Power Options. Okay, so as before, tips on the screen is with our naked put discussion for Naren, we can head to that Optionable Stock Statistics page to see the RSI and other values, and we can use that as a gauge for the first filters. Then we can follow up with our second filter as well. In this case, we use the RSI and then the number of days to short interest, looking for the higher chance of potentially a squeeze on the short sellers as they start to buy to cover those positions. Now we covered the criteria that were available. We saw a lot of criteria in the three strategies we covered. Covered calls, naked puts, and buying call positions. That same amount of criteria, just about 25 to 30 different option criteria, 50 or more total stock criteria between the fundamentals and the technicals are available for all 23 strategies supported on power options. Call buying, put buying, married put positions, covered calls, naked puts, collars, credit spreads, debit spreads, calendar spreads, straddles, strangles, condors, and butterflies as well. So a full complement to meet your needs of your desired criteria in these strategies that you prefer. And remember, you can take a 14-day free trial at any time. Just go to powerop.com, put in your name and email address. No credit card is required. You'll have full access to the site for 14 days.